Hello there, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Crafty Concepts with Erin. I have a very full album here. Don't worry, I'm going to take these out of the page protector to share with you. But this is a D ring album, and as you can see, it is super full. If I hold it like this, it kind of has that alligator mouth going on where it's wider at this end. So this is my temporary album. I organize them chronologically and each year has its own album and then vacations have a big album and I use the postbound albums. I like how the postbound albums have the layouts closer together in the middle than say the D-Ring album. This has a wider, the postbound album is going to have them stored very close like that and I feel like they have longer uh, or better longevity I use and abuse this and it has definitely held up, but I have dropped one before and it'll kind of, you know, wing chung the little prongs here. So obviously you don't want to drop any of your albums, but hey, it's life. It happens. So I am going to pull these out of here and then I think you guys have seen that one before, but that is for my mother-in-law. So I haven't put that away yet, but I'm going to pull these out and we'll look at these one by one. Are you ready for tons of inspiration? As I mentioned, I do believe I may have shared this in a layout uh, video share before, but since you saw it, I'll put it in here again because I think it's super cute. This is the Backyard Bliss collection, which is a very garden themed collection. And then these are the coordinating SVGs. What SVGs are is they are like a digital file you can you know, download onto your computer and then cut out with your Cricut or your Silhouette. And I love that you can customize them. You can make them bigger. You can size them down to use on a card and change the color of the paper. So those are really fun. So there's a little bit of pattern paper and spoiler alert, if you were a fan of the Backyard Bliss collection in the new catalog coming out in April, there is a paper pack and they're different. But if you like this one, I have a hunch you're going to love the next one. So stay tuned for that. And all of the layouts that have process videos, I will put into one playlist. I'll leave that in the link below or in the description box below so you can click on that playlist hit view full playlist and then you can scroll and find any video you're interested in and you want to find out more information or take a closer look at the process behind the layout so this one is again backyard bliss little sweet memories this one I am leaving in the page protector because this is an interactive layout with flip flaps. So you basically have a 12 by 12 layout there. So my family, this is my son Clayton and that's Hayden and his girlfriend. We like to put together gingerbread houses every year and I had tons of photos. So I put kind of the highlight photos on the front and then this opens up and you have all of these other photos. Sorry about the glare from the paper pack or from the page protectors, but that's really the only way to share this with you. This layout was one I learned in the creative design team or the creative design team creatives membership group. We did a month on interactive layouts. And if you thought this was cool, the one Chelsea shared was even more interactive. It flipped out, it flipped up, and then the other teachers that month had different designs, so it was tons of fun. But I added another one here. We had kind of a gingerbread crime scene, so I <laughs> hid that one under here with all of the journaling. The gingerbread man came broken, so my son, you know, he uh, took a bad situation and he made it into a fun memory. So that is freshly baked, and again, I do kind of walk you through the process of this uh, in this particular video um, and that's called Christmas Traditions. Very fun layout. This layout was created with the Seas and Greetings collection, which was a special and it was really fun because on one side they had kind of a winter theme and if you flip the paper over, it was similar, but it was like a beach theme. So I love paper packs like that. They're so fun. I have stamped embellishments mixed with stickers from the sticker sheet, lots of pattern paper going on here. And then my title was mixed with acrylic, which is part of the acrylic accessories. And then I did some stamping for winter shirts shredding of my son uh, riding his bike in the snow. If you didn't know you can ride mountain bikes in the snow, you can. I personally don't recommend it. He seems to love it. <laughs> so I've just kind of created two L-shaped embellishment clusters to frame in this one five by seven focal photo. And I used 
a flip flap. That last layout was all about the flip flaps. They come in different sizes. So I just created a pocket and glued that right on the back side. And then I put my journaling tag in there. I like to write when I created the layout. So I write created November of 2022. And then I wrote the name of the paper pack. And then sometimes I'll have more details on there. But yeah, that's my journaling uh, hidden right back there in a pocket. So that was super fun. Now I created a companion layout to go with this. They were taken the same day, but they're two different stories. I used the same season greetings paper pack um, and they're going to sit next to each other in the album because they were the same day. So it was kind of nice that I created them to work together, although they're two different stories. So this one I'm documenting a, I like to walk my dogs. I've got four very busy border collies and we have a small house. So I've got to get these guys out exercising as often as I possibly can. Rain, snow, sunshine, it doesn't matter. And so these are my dogs having a wonderful time. And my son snapped a photo of me hiking up the trail behind our house. And then one of you clever people uh, recommended that I added Stickles glitter gel to these foam letters. And I'm so sorry, I can't remember who did that because this was several months ago or who recommended it. But I did that after the video and I love it. So thank you so much for this suggestion. So again, C's and greetings. And then uh, this is fun too you get a lot of photos like if you have a series of photos and you have one big highlight photo and then you could do like a series of photos or in this case I've done uh, one each of my four border collies this double page layout I have half of it in the page protector uh, because I have another flip flap can you tell I love flip flaps those little guys are a staple in my craft room because they're so great for adding more photos or journaling and little accessories. This is the Cherish collection. This was a workshop kit that I changed up a little bit. This kit sold out almost immediately. It was super, super popular, so it's no longer available, but hopefully you can get some inspiration from this layout to use in your own albums. So this is a three by four flip flap. We were at a friend's wedding, so I kind of focused on the bride and groom over here and then some of us you know enjoying the wedding and then my youngest son is dancing with the bride and then we have another photo and then the story inside there so I thought that this was fun I do love to use circles and frames like this wreaths and whatnot in my scrapbook layouts I just think they're they always turn out so nice this layout was really fun to create. It was inspired by artwork in the catalog and it was kind of one of those, how did they do that? We had, I had some requests and so I went to figure it out. And if you watch this video, I took the scenic route. I ran into some difficulties and I'm sure if you are a handy seamstress or quilting or following patterns, then you would have <laughs> known a better way to do this, but I figured it out. So in the video, I shared a way to hand cut it and I also created a Cricut digital design space file so you can create this layout yourself much easier than the way I did it. And um, again, you can find this video in the playlist and in the description box of this video, you can find the link to that design space file if you want to recreate this. And I've already seen tons of layouts using this for different times of the year. This was created with the Four Seasons collection. And then I just thought this little truck stamp was so cute. So I really wanted to use it. I was out again on a snowy walk. This was several years. This was uh, 2021 and that other layout was 2022 of the snow. So it's definitely something I like to do, get out and take pictures in the snow. And this is just a shot way up on the mountain looking down onto our farm. And then I thought the berries look so pretty in the snow. So this is a layout too. You could do three by three flip flaps because they come in squares and you could have these interactive and flip flaps can flip up or they can flip out to the side. There's different ways to adhere those. This fun Christmas layout was created with the Christmas Story collection, and this one was all made of scraps. I had leftover bits and pieces. These are all tiny little pieces. I think that's my biggest one that's not even quite six by six. So some paper strips, scraps, and then I used some to die cut that fancy doily, which is one of my favorite dies. And yeah, I really like the way this turned out. I did have some die cuts left over from the collection, and I added in that gold glitter paper 
to really highlight the warm glow of the Christmas lights in the tree there. So my title was The Night Before Christmas, and I just journaled about my husband and I, how it gets harder and harder to stay up as your kids get older and older. So it was just kind of a fun little memory, but I really like how this turned out. And using scraps is always a good thing to do because as scrapbookers, we end up with a lot of scraps. Here is another Christmas story collection and some of these were from the workshop because like the scallop border piece was a workshop element and then I've mixed in some thin cuts. So this is the to-go cup and it is a die set that makes this and it opens so it's like a card. It's great for putting gift cards in and you can customize it for any occasion just by changing up the papers and the stamped image on your little coffee cup there. But my mom and I were Christmas shopping and we were stopping for a much needed coffee break. So I thought what a fun embellishment to add to this page. And yes, coffee does bring on some Christmas cheer. So I really was happy with how this layout turned out. And it's always fun to use your card making supplies on your scrapbook layouts as well. And then we have stickers from the sticker sheet and then some just sprigs uh, poking out the side and some gold glitter gems just to add a little fun. And then this I had in my stash. It's always coffee time. So I thought, you know, what I've got to add that it's black so it matches and it's perfect for the theme this layout was a creative design team collaboration challenge and the challenge was to use Christmas themed papers to make a non Christmas layout so what I did is pulled papers from two different Christmas collections one was Jingle Joy which was these bright um, pinks and the other one was I think it was called silver and gold and there was all these gold foiled papers in there so oftentimes even if you have a themed collection using the opposite side of the paper or changing up the embellishments you can really use that themed uh, paper pack for so much more. So these are my co-workers and I. We were out for some drinks and appetizers after work one day and I thought that this word cheers, it was, it did just say cheer because it was Christmas cheer I think and I added the S just cutting one in Cricut Design Space. So I was quite proud of how that turned out because I think it's pretty seamless there. And then I just used my stamps and a few embellishments from those collections to create this non-Christmas layout from Christmas themed papers. Here's another double page layout. This was created with a very beautiful Now and Forever collection. This collection also sold out right away. Now I have a three by four flip flap and I just hadn't added it to this one yet. I had thrown it down into the paper or to the page protector. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna show you guys how to do this. So you can see there's an adhesive strip. You just fold that over so that it's going to act as a hinge when you open this. When Make sure you have clean hands because if you have any dirt or oils on your hands, it's going to transfer to that uh, adhesive strip. So you're just going to fold it over and it's better when you can get your head right over the top of this. So I'm going to scoot that down a little bit and then you just line it up on top and press down. And if you don't push down too hard, you can readjust it. So I'm just gonna lightly, it's stuck to my finger, lightly tack that down and make sure I'm happy with the placement and I am, and then you can flip that up and burnish it. Now, some people choose to adhere it directly to their layout and then cut a slit in the page protector and feed it through. I find this to be very easy and it doesn't, I've had people ask, well, does the adhesive strip cover the photo? And because of the way they're created, there's a little space at the top, it overlaps the photo, or in this case, the journaling strip ever so slightly. It has never bothered me before. So I just find it easiest to adhere them right to the top of the uh, page protector, just like that. I'll bring this one back in because it is over a photo and you can see just slightly overlapping the very top. There's usually not anything that important in the very top of the photo, but even if there was, it's still very translucent and doesn't interfere with the photo at all. 
So this Now and Forever collection was a Valentine themed collection and I chose to document some older photos of my mom and dad's wedding that had been sitting in storage and I interviewed my mom and got all of the details which was really cool because even though I had heard bits and pieces over the years after interviewing her I realized there was a lot to the story I didn't know so many little details so that was a really fun experience and I'm so glad to have these. Now I mentioned earlier I scrapbook chronological so I Obviously, I don't have an album. I wasn't even alive back then. So I kind of have a little bit of a long lost memories album. Um, and I also will put them into the album of the year I documented them. So in this case, these are going to go into my 2022 or 2023 album. And I'm completely fine with that. That works for me. But as my mom gives me more and more photos from my childhood, that Long Lost Memories album, uh, may I may transfer layouts like this to that album. This is the same Now and Forever collection. I scrap lifted this off of a pin I found on Pinterest and I almost created the layout exactly. There's my fancy doily thin cut there. I absolutely love this. And then stickers and then the collection had these embroidered embellishments and I thought they were so fun. And then I just used my thin cuts to cut a little bit of a uh, or a little title there and then doodled some journaling lines around the outside. I just did two very loose wavy overlapping lines and I think that that is a very fun look to kind of stop your eye when you have a lot of white space it stops your eye from going off the page and redirects you back into the center of this photo with my husband and I standing under this uh, I'm not sure what kind of tree that was but it was all in bloom and I thought it was really perfect for these papers. Here is a fall inspired layout I created with the Crisp Air collection. This one also sold out. You guys are noticing a theme here. If you love something, don't wait because they're, they don't have a crystal ball, unfortunately. And sometimes paper packs, you know, maybe aren't as popular and then you'll get one that sells out almost immediately. So it's really kind of hard to predict that. Uh, I always love fall papers and never skip on those. So I was super excited about this collection. And I, for my customers, I have a private Facebook group and we do a monthly sketch challenge where I will turn this into a sketch and then break it down given the exact measurements and then I draw a prize winner at the end of the month for the people who participate and contribute to that sketch challenge. So this was one of those sketches and it was so fun to see all the different takes on it but I really love this one and all the different elements going on. I printed my journaling on vellum and tucked that underneath. Adhesive shows through vellum so I tacked it down underneath the photo and then this is just kind of loose and I tore the edge there for just some interest in detail and I thought these large uh, arrows I just cut I cut the dovetail and then uh, you know mirrored that into an arrow on the opposite side I really thought those were fun elements that really help kind of lead your eye through the layout and of course all the beautiful fall colors definitely make this one fun to look at this one was created with the Four Seasons Fall Paper Pack, and I really like this layout. Definitely one I'm going to visit again, or revisit again. When you have a busier pattern paper, using it as a large frame in the background is a great way to not let it overwhelm the paper, but you still get to enjoy that fun pattern. So I had a lot to say about my dog, Murphy, here, who is a firewood thief, and that was a kind of a fun story. But these were stickers from the Coordinating Sticker Sheet. So I made a little swoopy banner element there and then just some embellishment clusters. I added some wooden arrows. Arrows are kind of one of my go-tos. They seem to just work for everything. I combined a little um, the thin cut title here with some stamping. I really like this set of thin cuts because they're tall yet narrow so you can fit a long word on the paper. In this case it's a very short word but it is nice because some of the fonts are kind of fat and you're limited as to how many letters you can fit onto the layout. So I really like this slimline one here and then another little wooden arrow pointing to the word tradition. And I usually don't do overly themed pet photos. I like to add little details. So I have a lot of dog and cat themes 
stamps. So I had some paw prints and then this live, laugh, woof. And I just used a marker to color over the word laugh just to give that some color. And then for real, like F-U-R, real. So just little, uh, you know, nods to the pet in the photos with little details like that I think are really fun. Now, if you remember the gingerbread layout I showed you in the beginning, that was the freshly baked collection, which is a holiday themed baking collection, but it also makes an excellent ice cream paper pack. So in these photos, we are having gelato in Rome. And so I thought that this looks like an ice cream cone, like a waffle cone to me. And in the case with all of that delicious gelato, they had the um, macarons all lined up there. So I had the stamp and then they put a little waffle cookie in your gelato so I used this was a pie from a Thanksgiving pie set and I just made that look like a waffle cookie and I was quite proud of myself there uh, repurposing my stamps but this was a fun fun collection and this is a stamp and thin cut set if you're watching this in March they uh, close to my heart is having the stamp tacular sale going on right now it's fabulous. They have up to 60% off some of their stamp sets and thin cuts. So if you have had some stamps or th and thin cut sets on your wish list, go on over and see if they're on sale because uh, it's pretty awesome. I created this layout back in January. This is that same trip to Italy and we were having fun with some forced perspective type shots at the Tower of Pisa. So I really thought this was a fun day and you know we were just kind of like here for example is what the photo looked like and there's me taking the photo and it was really a good time just trying to get those different shots. We went very early in the morning. We got there gosh I think it was around 6 a.m. so there were hardly any crowds and that is definitely the trick to traveling. Beat the crowds, get there early, and then get out and go have coffee afterwards. <laughs> so it's, it's well worth it when you can not have your shots all full of people. So this was a really cool trip. This is the Are We There Yet collection. And I thought, how perfect is this paper for these photos with kind of, you know, it's an architectural point of interest. And this paper just has all of these architectural um, you know, marvels on there. There is Eiffel Tower, Statue of Liberty, and so many more. And there's stamps to go along with these too. So if you wanted a stamp, maybe you went and saw Big Ben and there's a tiny little stamp that you can have. Perfect size for traveler's notebooks as well. So that was really, I definitely got all those to add to my collection. Now we're jumping back to the fall. You can tell I'm overdue for a scrapbook layout share. Usually I do one at the end of each catalog cycle and, and with the holidays and everything, I just didn't get it at the end of December. So you get to see these now. This is the Fabulous or Fabulous collection, which was the Halloween special. And I really had fun with this layout. So the paper inspired the photos. And if you have been following me for a while, you know my cat Dave. And he's so handsome. I just love this little guy. As he's growing into a mature young cat, we're calling him King Dave now because he certainly acts as if he rules the castle. So this was another layout I turned into a sketch challenge for my cat customers and it was really fun because not everybody has a Cricut. I cut this piece on the Cricut and cut it in half and used half here and here. So I saw some real creativity on ways to navigate that, even some hand cut ones that were pretty darn impressive actually. So it was always fun to see the different takes on it. And this is a fun layout to, you know, when you have a lot of photos. And again, these are three by three, so you could add flip flaps as well and get a lot more photos on a layout like this. But it was a great way to bring in all of that fun pattern paper and again this is a busier pattern paper so when you have it just peeking out like that you see enough of it to appreciate the design but it's not overwhelming and I had a lot of fun with this one I fussy cut some um, of the elements from pattern paper and then I've got some stickers and then some stamping going on for this particular Halloween layout here is a single page layout I created with the same fabulous collection. My niece had dyed her hair green and was practicing her spooky makeup. So I thought this is perfect because, you know, she's got a big smile on her face and it's fun. So I kind of like the more whimsical Halloween. I think it's more cutesy, but still appropriate for a, a young adult and not too juvenile. Halloween, it can be either really, really scary or too juvenile. So sometimes it's hard to kind of get it right in the middle there. 
but I love the title Beautiful. I thought that was perfect for her photos here. And this uh, circle, half circle element was really fun to add to this layout. Another double page layout showcasing the freshly baked collection. This time I was using it for its intended purpose. My grandma or my grandma, my mom and the boys, so their grandma were making holiday cookies and I documented this memory and this is actually going to be for her. I meant to give this to her for Christmas and yeah, that didn't happen. So it's kind of like when you make cards and then don't mail them out it's better late than never right so this was a very fun collection this was the workshop which had these little swirly elements and I kind of adapted it to work for me but I love all of the fun holiday cookies and baking sheets and the fun title baking memories and this was just a really fun, this was one of those collections I thought it was cute but when I started creating with it I really fell in love with it it was just so much fun one more Christmas layout to share. Now this was the Christmas Story Workshop collection. If you're not familiar with the workshops, Close to My Heart has a workshop for each of their paper collections and you can make three double page layouts and they give you everything you need, including a full color step-by-step -step guide on how to put that together. You just basically need to add your adhesive and maybe some accessories like foam tape and then of course your photos. I did change this up a little bit because the orange orientation of my photos were different. This is my son and his girlfriend Hayden and Desiree all dressed up for their winter formal and I just thought oh this uh, another one of those paper packs is just perfect for my photos. This um, all of the embellishments I added gold marker to the edging which is something I learned from Katie in the 31 days of Christmas cards event and then kind of went crazy with it because it was such a fun technique. I even stamped and die cut the title and then added the gold accent around the edge of the die cut and it really just dresses it up a lot. Can you see it there on that tag how it shines? So pretty and then I added just little berries pretty much anywhere I felt like it needed a touch of gold. I added it. So these scallop borders and like this circular element you don't have to have a cutting machine like a Cricut or a Silhouette to have layouts like this. The workshops uh, provide them. You just punch them out of a sheet and put it together and they are so easy. If you're just starting out with scrapbooking they're fantastic. If you like to make layouts quickly again they're fantastic or if you're like me and you just can't help yourself and you want to change things up they're great for that too. I have just a couple layouts left to share with you. This I created very recently on my channel. This is the storybook collection. I found some old Disneyland pictures of us writing the teacups that I hadn't yet scrapbooked and I thought that this was so perfect. The colors, the magic memories, the castle, the little mouse ears I added from my stash and then this sticker was also from my stash but the rest of it is all from the storybook collection and I've seen so many fun uh, layouts come out of this particular collection. I have one more to share featuring these papers. This one is one of my favorites. This was inspired by a page map sketch and I just love how it turned out and I turned this one into a sketch to share with my um, customers also and it was so fun to see all of their artwork. But again the storybook collection and how cute are these little dragons and this collection is still available so if you love this and you think you have some ideas pictures that would work for this it is still in my online shop so you can check that out. But this I cut on the Cricut slay the day but there is a pocket card that has slay the day on there so you can definitely mimic this layout pretty closely and then I got the workshop and it had diamonds I cut them in half and made a little banner across the top of the layout and I just thought it was so fun it's my boys having an epic sword battle on the trampoline and I just kind of thought the whole dragons and castles and knights was a really fun play on those photos this double page layout features Life a Hoot and I am really enjoying the purples and teals in this collection. I don't get to scrapbook with purples very often and I found the perfect photos of my their friends and my sister-in-laws and we were scrapbooking having a long scrapbooking weekend. Again this is one I also have created more recently so I was inspired by Dorothy over at Scrapbooking Quebec. She does a lot of this large focal circle and um, then she had this kind of diagonal line and I just loved what she did. I changed the photos up just a bit but definitely inspired by Dorothy's beautiful artwork. So I thought the owls were fun in this collection and there's gold foiling on the stickers and this is a title from the sticker sheet and when you're scrapbooking life is definitely a hoot so I thought that title was very appropriate.
Lastly, I have this single page layout also featuring the Life's a Hoot collection and I documented my dog and my cat and they just love to help me work out. And when I say help, you know, they, they think they're helping totally in the way. This exercise, I had my dumbbells and you do like a row, like you're in a plank position, right? So then you're holding plank and you row at the same time. And so Luna wiggled underneath me, flipped over in between the weights and looked up at me like just, hey, mom, I'm here. So I had to go grab my camera. It was too funny. But I added stamps for my embellishments. I didn't have, you know, workout themed embellishments. So I kind of made up my own by using the little bones for dumbbells. And then I used some washi tape to add some sweatbands. And this is another recent one. And just like that fall layout, this isn't an overly themed pet layout. I just have a few. There's the paw prints, a couple stamped images, and then some fun little like uh, sentiments like stay positive and uh, possum workout. So this was really fun. And I hope you guys found a lot of inspiration here in this layout share. Again, just click the more. It Depending on what device you're on, it'll say see more and it's right before the comments under the video in the description. So you just open that up, you'll find all of the information and then the playlist with all of these videos. And of course, let me know which one is your favorite. I can't wait to hear. Thank you so much for spending time with me today and I will We'll catch you next time. Here is that playlist if you want to check that out. Happy crafting and bye for now.